my father's change. Father, how much you like to talk about how strong you used to be. How once, as a young man, you arm wrestled men in bars for quarters. Take my hand, the bathtub is slick. Pretend it's still all for quarters. Annyeonghaseyo, this is Mark Peterson with the Frog Outside the Well Research Center and representing today the Sejong Cultural Society. And today we have with us the first, second, third prize winners of our Shijo contest for adults. Let's start off with meeting our first place winner, Josh Poole. Josh, uh, tell me about yourself. I, I live in Lexington, Virginia. It's a mountain town. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. I worked, uh, I was a line cook for six years, but now I work in museums and I'm a barista at a coffee shop. Sasha Palmer, and you live in Baltimore. Yes, I live in Baltimore. And um, currently I work in um, geriatrics. I um, care for elderly folks at a nursing home. But uh, I've been doing a lot of things throughout my life. My life took several unexpected turns. So I'm uh, a linguist by profession. And I freelance for many years as an editor, proofreader. And I also worked in an editorial office uh, at a telecom company. But most recently, it was childcare and now geriatrics. And um, I write poems just for, for the love of it. <laughs> and let's meet our uh, third place winner, Chung McDermott. Uh, you live in the Washington, D.C. area, I know. Tell us about yourself. I worked as a banker. I worked for the government. I changed my job like I'm changing shoes every two, three years. <laughs> and I finally... <laughs> Finally retired, and I'm a grandmother of, of a three children, grandchildren. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, welcome, all three of you. This is a little bit of your uh, background. Let's now hear each of your poems. My father's change. Father, how much you like to talk about how strong you used to be. How once, as a young man, you arm wrestled men in bars for quarters. Take my hand. The bathtub is slick. Pretend it's still all for quarters. Wow. Uh, Josh, I, I've got to confess, when I read your poem, uh, I the first time, I got a lump in my throat. And a, yeah. I think a tear in my eye. It's very, very clever. And your title, My Father's Change, you have a, a yeah. double meaning uh, on the word change, right? I was I was all too proud of the title. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good for you. We ought to be proud yeah. of our work. Well, let's come let's, back uh, and talk about each poem after we hear them mm -hmm. all. Let's uh, let's hear Sasha. Yours is in a similar vein. Let's hear your poem. At the start, a tiny spark. It grows and grows and becomes fire. It burns clear, bold and untamed. It's want for life insatiable. Where are you, bright days of my youth? My hair is gray like ashes. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, again, the meaning of ashes, the, the poem turns on the meaning of ashes. It's the ashen gray as well as the burnt out fire. Just beautiful. And in the same vein as the geriatric poem that Josh wrote. Now, when I read both of your poems, uh, Josh, I assumed you were father's age taking care of grandfather. But mm -hmm. uh, you, you tell me that your poem is really watching your mother taking care of your grandfather. Is that right? Yes, yes. Um, my grandparents lived fairly close to where I grew up. And uh, when they got really old, I helped do a lot of their uh, maintenance for their the lawn. They had a good bit of acreage. And uh, so I spent a lot of time with my mom there when they couldn't take care of themselves fully. And uh, Sasha... When I read your poem, I thought you were at least my age. <laughs> Your, yourself with well, ashen hair, but not so. Uh, it is really great. <laughs> but uh, I, I recently became a grandmother, and that might have also, you know, um, added something to, to my choosing this theme. Well, excellent. And Chung, you tell me you're a grandmother now. Your, your poem is not grandmotherly, but uh, let, let's do <laughs> your poem, Chung. Okay. Icicles, under the eaves of the heart, icicles cling like crystal swords, freezing with fear, sharp with sorrow, glaring with an icy stare. But 
with the steady gaze of the sunshine, I drip tears. Icicles drip tears. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's beautiful. Great imagery. The sharp, icy stare, and then it's uh, dripping tears. Incredible imagery. Just beautiful imagery. Yeah, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. Well, let's talk about each of your poems with you, the author. What was your motivation? What were you thinking? Where did you go? And how did you fit this poem into the somewhat rigid structure of a uh, of a shijo? Yeah. Josh, tell me about writing your poem. What was it like? I, I think for me, it was, I mean, I guess I create things for a couple of reasons. One's to record the, the daily things that I come across. There, there's another aspect, I guess, is sort of reconciliation, I suppose, and dealing with complicated emotions, whether that be regret or, or happiness. And for me, my, my grandfather in the last few years and, and his passing is something that I never really examined thoroughly. And when I tried, I tried to do it with prose and uh, short fiction and it always just it was just really bad it was really bad writing and um so when i when i saw that there was a the seizure competition I, I thought you know maybe the the rigidity in the form and like the economy of words might force me to examine something in, in an effort to to reduce it and, and so it was it was the perfect medium for for me to con convey how i felt and it worked it works it works very Thank nice. you. yeah Sasha, tell me about writing your poem. Uh, I saw in your bio that uh, one of your inspirations is a woman who's 108. She is. Uh, I, I can't tell that she was the inspiration for this particular poem, although she might have been, because um, usually when I write a poem, I can almost never tell where it will take me. And uh, I just have this feeling that a poem is about to um, happen. And then I have this feeling for, for a while, and then it just happens. Um, I wouldn't say it right itself, but in a way, maybe <laughs> it does, because it's probably a lot of things come together and make a poem. So it, it might have been my meeting her. It might have been turning 50. It might have been becoming a grandmother. All these things came together and became a poem. And all uh, these and, things uh, make you look at your own mortality and your your progress yeah. mortality, which includes an ashen hair. Your hair is not <laughs> that gray, Sasha, really. <laughs> Oh, it is. What one of my friends, you know, um, one of the um, people I care for, she tells me every day that I have my hair is very gray, too gray for a young girl like me. <laughs> so, they're a lot of fun. And tell me about writing your poem. What was what was what were you thinking? What was why icicles? Why in the world icicles? Um, <laughs> I I had lived in Boston, and during the winters, I would often see massive icicles under the eaves of my front door. <laughs> they were just massive and really sharp, and I was often afraid of getting impaled by them. Oh, dear. And <laughs> yes, they were literally like, you know, probably three feet, I mean, thick, massive icicles. And, but when I saw the winter sunshine melting them away, it kind of showed me kind of listening and enduring for some reason. Like, because you might get hurt. <laughs> Seeing the icicles melting, it really gave me a, that understanding of what love really means. You don't have to break love the ice. Love really means. Yeah, because I don't know, during the pandemic, I started reading a lot of articles that talk about people's, people's depression and anger and, and violence and such. And then I'm like, it kind of, brought this imagery that I saw, like this ice was kind of portrayed people, that's and what it takes for people around and help. Yes. Yeah. Winter sunshine on icicle. I really want to capture that the, the poetry. Well, it, it's great imagery. You, you said it uh, represents love, and I, I suppose that's right, but I see, I see more imagery of uh, forgiveness and compassion and understanding. Yes. You know, there's a phrase, hurt people hurt people. People that are hurt, hurt other people. And in the same way that uh, an icicle might appear to be a rigid, even threatening, like a sword image, but there's the soft side of it as it, as it melts in the sunshine. And indeed, when the violent or hurt people come to resolution, they, they, they melt. And so uh, I, I see great imagery in your in your poem. I want to thank you all, all three for coming on my uh, program today. 
and for writing such beautiful shijo. Thank you, thank you so much. Well, thank, we'll you, thank you for having me. Thank you for having us. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, I hope to cross paths with you all again at some point along the way. But uh, we'll say we'll say goodbye at, at this point.